Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, the last day of DEF CON 26. Yeah. And uh, I'm assuming most of you are still waking up. Uh, but this will be a really good presentation. Uh, Yu uh, Wang uh, is going to be, or Yu Wang is going to be talking about attacking the Mac OS kernel graphics driver. So please give him a hand and uh, welcome him here. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation, uh, especially during lunch time. My name is Wang Yu uh, from DD Research America. Uh, what I I'd like to share with you today is related to macOS graphics driver vulnerability and uh, macOS kernel security. Um, I started to pay attention to macOS kernel security last year, including uh, kernel driver development, bug hunting, and uh, vulnerability exploitation. Before that, I preferred to study the Windows kernel security and the uh, Android Linux kernel root. Um, yeah. Uh, after entering the macOS kernel world last year, I learned a lot of well-known kernel vulnerabilities, and I picked up four of them as the background for today. The first case is from EMBU, uh, from Google Project Zero. And the CV number is the CV 2015-3712. It's a NVIDIA GeForce driver arbitrary kernel memory write vulnerability. This vulnerability can eventually lead to uh, code execution due to lack of input parameter validation. And uh, at here, uh, you can find a POC. Uh, the second vulnerability comes from Cisco Talos research team, uh, which is a non-point dereference bug. Uh, it seems that the non-point dereference type of vulnerability can be exploited two years ago, which also means uh, which also means that I'm late. Uh, you can see that uh, there's a for exploit code on the exploit database, which is a good starting point for uh, exploitation research. And the next case is from my friend Chen Liang. The attack surface he chose is uh, user mode graphics daemon. And he won the Pantuon game, Pantuon game uh, with this vulnerability two years ago. The user mode daemon associated with the graphics library has certain permissions, and they are usually accessible in the sandbox process. And the logic of those daemon is usually very complicated. Uh, this condition determines that the daemon are nature attack surface. And you can uh, get more detailed information from the write-ups. Uh, the last is also from KingLab. The CV number is uh, 2016, uh, 15, uh, 1850. It's, uh, it's an IO accelerator family out of bounds kernel memory write vulnerability. The graphics rendering engine is one of the hardest uh, hit areas on any operating system platform from the Win 32K driver on Windows to uh, to the IO accelerator family and kernel ex extension on Mac OS. Um, those type of, uh, of the type of those four vulnerability I choose ranged from non-point dereference, double free and use after free to uh, arbitrary kernel memory write vulnerability, and also uh, the range from user mode to kernel mode. Uh, this case has repeatedly reminded us that the graphics security cannot be ignored. So therefore, I decided to start my kernel, Mac OS kernel research from here. And part two, part two is uh, from end day POC to zero days. When I decided to investigate the Apple graphic driver vulnerability. Last year, 
I started my research from the POC samples from EMBU, such as the uh, uh, 2017-2443 and the uh, 2017-2489. The reason for choosing this example is that they are very easy to learn. Um, the logic of the POC code is clear, and the amount of the code is less than 100. Uh, we can take a take the first one, the the two four four three as an example. Two four four three is a kernel arbitrary code execution vulnerability. Uh, as you can see, uh, the target of the POC is the uh, Intel FB client control. Uh, it's a it's a number number one in green color, and the input selector here. Uh, uh, so it's uh, number three in, in blue color. The input selector is uh, 291 uh, in, in hex format. And then the only thing we need to do is uh, fill the input buffer with random garbage data. It's uh, number three in red color. So just this. So I think for the security research community, uh, each of us will think about how to start a new round of kernel code auditing from here. Um, after I had this idea, one of my friends told me that starting from here might be a waste of time because the binary has already carefully examined by Google Project Zero. Um, this uh, reminds me of my Windows kernel font scalar engine vulnerability presentation at Black Hat USA four years ago. At that time, Jura from Google Project Zero found a large number of kernel font uh, scatter vulnerabilities. But I can still find a new kernel, find new kernel double fetch zero days in the code that has been audited, such as uh, CVE 2015 uh, 1819. So this time, I still want to give it a try. Mm -hmm. But but then I began to feel that my friend was probably right. <laughs> my my fasting tour didn't have any valid output uh, on the first day. And and even the breakpoints I set it in uh, macOS kernel didn't trigger. Um uh, fortunately for me I didn't give up at that time. Otherwise I, I don't think we will meet today. <laughs> Um, when I analyzed the root cause, I found at least three problems uh, hidden uh, the, the work of my fuzzing system. Uh, without first serving uh, these problems, the whole system will become very efficient. Efficient. Um, there are yeah, there are three obstacles. The first one is uh, target selection. And second one is a uh, is a field driver protection, and third one is uh, unremarkable selectors. Yeah, let me uh, discuss it, it in detail. Um, first one, target selection. Uh, there are there are many different targets on the macOS system, from kernel extension to internal classes, and uh, uh, we, we mentioned before uh, Intel FB client control is just one of the very small branch of the graphics uh, kernel. Uh, I list some of the target drivers here. There are, there are a lot of from uh, AMD to uh, NVIDIA to Intel uh, and also uh, IO family drivers. It's a, it's a uh, AMD uh, Intel is like a mini pod driver and the uh, and the family driver is a more general uh, driver, kernel driver. And I think uh, as a professional uh, security researcher, we should not miss any possibility. Um, and next one is uh, most more important. The second obstacle is the filter driver. Uh, before touching the target graphics driver, there are usually filter driver that protect them which can uh, cause our fuzzing tour to fail into an effective loop. Um, in, this, in this figure, uh, we can see that before touching the graphics driver, 
uh, Apple, Intel, Frame Buffer, Azo, uh, uh, Future Driver, Apple Graphics Device Control is defining against the malicious input for the graphics driver. Um, here is the filter driver in right line, and uh, the green line is a, it's a graphics driver itself. More specifically, in this example, selector 707 represents uh, FB set EDID, and correspondingly, in the filter driver here, at here. If the input buffer length is not equal to uh, 408 bytes, all fuzzing attempts for the interface are meaningless. This means that if we only rely on the static analysis of the target driver and then build the fuzzing process, it's obviously not enough. We need to consider the entire architecture of the graphics driver set. Otherwise, we are just uh, wasting our time. The third obstacle is uh, unremarkable selectors. After actually getting to the target driver, I found that there are still some hidden control codes or selectors. And I uh, found uh, there are also uh, the, the control code, um, the control code uh, affect uh, the inf infection of the fuzzing system indeed. These control codes are important because they are the key to open the door to another world, uh, meaning that there are a lot of unknown code behind their doors. Their stores. Um, after extracted all the validated control codes with ID script last year, I found at least uh, one such key. It's uh, 800000 and uh, some random data. As you can see, after entering the corresponding handler, there's another word hidden there. And after taking, uh, after taking, so after taking their small three small steps, things quickly become clear. And I found a lot of problems in just one day. Let me show, uh, share some examples with you. The first. The first one is a uh, unpatched uh, local panic caused by a division by zero error. But be aware that the root cause behind this error is uh, is a uh, out of bounds read access to the input buffer. Uh, it's a it's a division uh, by zero um, uh, uh, register R R twelve is zero and a case two. Case two is a, is an unpatched local panic caused by non-point reference, and the root cause of the problem is that the driver uh, incorrectly uh, initialized uh, and dereferenced the uh, variable. Um, at here, RSI register is zero, and uh, offset is three uh, F seventy. The next case is a uh, kernel stack. Stack-based buffer flow vulnerability. As you can see here, um, th uh, this stack overflow vulnerability is mitigated by stack cookie. So, in order to exploit this case, we need to have a we, we need to have the kernel arbitrary memory reading capability. Fortunately, I quickly found one. Uh, CVE 2017 1.3.3.8.3. Combined with the uh, two vulnerabilities, we can bypass the stack cookie protection and gain kernel arbitrary code execution capability. Uh, but compared to kernel uh, arbitrary kernel memory reading, uh, I think uh, uh, kernel arbitrary memory writing capability is often what we really want. And here is an example. CVE ID 7155, and through it, uh, I, I find more cases, such as uh, CVE 2017 7163. Yeah, let's take the uh, let's let's take this one uh, as an example. 
uh, to discuss the kernel arbitrary memory write vulnerability. The root cause of this vulnerability is that frame buffer driver lack, lacks input validation and uh, sanitization. Um, and at, as you can see here, this instruction, oh, it's a little, this is more. Um, this instruction, uh, move edx to rax plus rsi. Um, this instruction is going to write value uh, in rd edx to offset of uh, to the offset of rax plus rsi. And rax at here is a base address of a kernel object. Is um, and uh, we can lock it through the arbitrary kernel memory read vulnerability. And we can control the ESI register at here. It's R A A A. We can control this uh, register. This means that we can control the target memory address of arbitrary write primitive. And then we can fully control the RD EDX register at here. Uh, EDX is uh, all controlled by uh, attacker. Um, this means that uh, we can control the value to be written. The above conditions are perfect to achieve arbitrary memory, uh, arbitrary memory write, arbitrary values. So, so in my opinion, the, the quality of this vulnerability is pretty good. Yeah, but I still uh, choose to report it to Apple last year. Um, yeah. yeah, because I'm not using my lop laptop, I'm unable to, unable to make the demonstration. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't uh, take the video for it. But uh, trust me, uh, the, this type of uh, demo is boring. Uh, just uh, run the exploit and uh, pop up root shell. And, and the uh, and the quality of this uh, because the quality of this vulnerability is pretty pretty good, so it's very easy to write exploit ex exploit code for this. Uh, I think you can give it a try. <laughs> yeah, the the first part is uh, yeah yes here and then from the uh, NDPOC to the RD. The next part I think is more uh, interesting. A Kimon framework and uh, and. Uh, and the other projects I uh, I did last year. Last year, one of my tasks was to build a kernel monitoring system for our DLP project, uh, data leakage prevention project. And when I went to study the existing kernel monitoring interface, I found that the building monitoring mechanisms were not very friendly for third party development. Specifically, uh, there are two building monitoring mechanisms available, uh, kernel authorization subsystem and mandatory access control uh, policy subsystem. But the bad news is, is that they are not suitable for the current security-related kernel development tasks. Uh, the kernel authorization subsystem was introduced in the macOS uh, 10.4 Tiger kernel in 2005. And the problem now is that uh, this callback interface lacks the necessary maintenance and have not been upgraded for about 13 years. Um, yeah. Uh, for, for the uh, scope file operation, uh, number two, for the file operation listener, there are only seven file operation related callbacks available, uh, I think, which is not which is uh, obviously not enough. There are only uh, file open, close, delete, read, write, uh, rename, exchange, and uh, create process. But I, I think this is obviously not enough. And for uh, for the operation file operation listeners, they are unable to block any file operations. Uh, just notification, uh, just notification is uh, unacceptable. <laughs> Uh, say uh, we, we detect the ransomware, and uh, we can only watch it, and we cannot block it. So if, if my endpoint security solution is this, I think my boss might fire me. <laughs> um, and 
for some specific callbacks. The input parameter often lack critical context information. For example, for quit process callback handler, the input parameter is missing command line information. Uh, this is very important to us. And uh, uh, in the file operation callback handler, we cannot distinguish between new file creation and uh, open existing. It's also important to us. And for we know the listeners, uh, not every file system operation triggers an authorization request. This means that our monitor can be bypassed. Uh, it's also not, not acceptable. Um, yeah, compared with kernel authorization subsystem, mandatory access control framework has a series of more granular callback interface, which are introduced in kern into kernel from macOS 10.5. Yeah, 10.5. However, Apple quickly banned third parties from using this interface and claimed that, that this interface were not part of the KPI. A KPI is short for kernel programming interface. This means that the mandatory access control framework is totally private. Yeah, uh, we cannot use that uh, interface. But if you really want to uh, use that interface in kernel, uh, since, since we are all uh, kernel extension, we have permission to uh, lock it the target function in kernel and uh, and then invoke it. Yeah, if you really want to use the interface in kernel, I think you will meet the following compatibility uh, compatibility issues. I reviewed almost all the kernel open source code about Mac policy. Um, and, and I found this one, uh, the following cases. The case one, case one shows that the interface were deleted or replaced, replaced directly by kernel. This, this is unacceptable because the, the feature disappeared, uh, disappeared directly. Uh, uh, is, can, I, I cannot accept this. <laughs> and uh, case two, case two shows that protocols and the input parameters were changed directly. It's also unacceptable because my driver will panic. Uh, you cannot add a, add a, a parameter directly into the, the prototype, right? <laughs> and case three shows that the interface was inserted into the middle of the dispatch table. Yeah, my, my driver will, will panic too. <laughs> you know? And uh, here's the case four. The interface has been rewritten, but forgot to upgrade the policy version number. So my point is that as a third party developer, we have to use this mechanism very, very carefully. And in order to bring out some changes, I'd like to introduce you to Kimo, a open source an open source pre and post callback based framework for macOS kernel monitoring. Um, since there's no patch guard or similar kernel self protection subsystem, I built the pre and post operation callback interface based on my kernel in hook engine. Uh, by using this framework, I can uh, add new features to any function I care about. Uh, the the the, basic, the idea of the pre and the post operation callback architecture is uh, actually is borrowed from Windows kernel. Uh, generally speaking, uh, in the pre callback handler, I can field the input parameters, and in the post callback handler, I can reset the function's return value if needed. I have two examples here. Um, the first one is uh, is a kernel extension monitor or a uh, kernel extension firewall. Yeah, I, I know there's, uh, there are similar functions in Mac mandatory access control policy mechanism, but I still want to use my own method to achieve it again. As can be seen uh, here, the first uh, line is a pre-callback handler. And in the pre-callback handler, I can filter the input parameters Oh, it's it's uh, it's small, um, such as such as uh, I can get the 
UID, I can get PID, uh, parent ID, and uh, uh, the kernel extension name is uh, com.mandinate.monitor, and the pass, and also version number, uh, uh, mo module base, and a module, module size. Uh, yeah, in this case, I use the uh, file mandinate to our, uh, it's named uh, monitor.app as an example. The reason is just uh, because it contains a driver uh, and will load that driver into kernel. This is true. Um, yeah, and uh, in the post callback handler, uh, in the pre callback handler here, I using a disassembler to uh, search the endpoint of the target driver, and I can patch the driver endpoint. So as can be seen here, the driver failed to load. And in the post callback handler, I can reset the function return value if needed. Another more interesting example in the mandatory access control policy is a mandatory access control policy monitor. Um, so are you wondered, uh, wondered about uh, which module in the system use the mandatory access control policy? And which policy set do they use? I, I think here is the answer. As, as can be seen, the first one uh, I dumped from kernel is uh, AMFI. AMFI is short for Apple Mobile File Integrity. And uh, it's all handlers of this module. Uh, including uh, base address, a module offset, set, and, uh, and policy name. Um, yeah, that's can be seen. Uh, AMFI and uh, this one is a uh, sandbox, uh, Mac sandbox registered a large number of Mac policies. Um, yeah, the the tricky part of this feature is how to get the mutex lock. Um, I, I mean. We need to hold the lock before accessing kernel data structures. Um, yeah, but the policy lock, policy mutex lock, is not exported. But fortunately, I found uh, I finally found a way to to lock that uh, uh, that mutex lock, and uh, you will uh, you can uh, review my code for for more information. And in addition to uh, illuminating and monitoring mandatory access control policy. Kmon can also um, block or handshake arbitrary handlers if needed. In this case, I still use the file maintenance tool monitor.app as an example. Uh, the reason is this tool will try to register five uh, MAC callbacks. The first one is, uh, is for uh, process monitoring, the second one is for dynamic library monitoring, and the third one is for keyboard monitoring, and uh, uh, then it's a uh, file operation, last one is uh, kernel extension. Um, and the Kimon can block their request. Here's an example. Um, yeah, demo. I, I dem demonstrated, uh, demonstrated this uh, at Black Hat Arsenal three days ago, and I didn't make the video for it. Yeah, but, but don't worry. Uh, talk is cheap. Show me the code, right? <laughs> Definitely. I released uh, all my source code. Um, yeah, please check out my source code for more detailed information. Um, yeah. In addition to the two applications above, I also implement a kernel fuzzing helper by using by using KMON framework. I call it uh, Keeper. Keeper can randomly inject arrows, uh, assist in recording the input parameters, and call stacks of the graphics driver. Yeah, for me, uh, the, this feature is very helpful. Uh, as can be seen here, uh, I. Uh, I inline hook the uh, Intel FB client control do attributes, and uh, and this is my fuzzing tool. A selector is a uh, is a random, and the input data is uh, it's also random. Um, yeah, and and uh, this uh, figure shows that 
the input data is uh, is a random data, and I can do bit flipping here. Um, actually, I, I also implement another uh, to uh, another project uh, for monitoring uh, IPC communi IPC communication. Okay, okay. Yeah, the last part, uh, last part is uh, discussion of zero days and uh, macOS kernel protection. Um, yeah, first, let me show you a graphics driver related to zero day. Uh, I have a simple demo. This system has uh, all the system patches installed and And uh, after running my POC, the system crashed. Uh, yeah. uh, it's this is re re reboot. Uh, yeah. And and here is the call stack information. Um, it, it's a heap overwrite vulnerability, and the panic call stack shows that. Uh, it's a victim thread. This victim thread is accessing the corrupted heap. And uh, uh, and this is another crash thread, uh, crash thread. In fact, they are all victims of the vulnerability because the uh, thread are crop, uh, crops, the heap is not theirs. And the root cause of this vulnerability is the following piece of code. Uh, let me give you some background on this code. The input uh, in the yellow color, the input is the length of my input tent data. And uh, the length of the input data should be a multiple of 10. And all, all numbers are in hex format. It should be a multiple of 10. And uh, the general logic of this code is that it processed uh, uh, one round every 10 bytes. Um, if the final length is less than 10 at here, if the final length is less than 10, the code breaks the loop. So can you find the bug in this code? I, I find the bug manually. <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 the problem comes from this uh, subtraction uh, operation. If the input buffer length is uh, greater than 10, this code is fine. Uh, but, but if the, the buffer size I passed in is less than 10, you can see here, less than 10, this subtraction will cause an integer flaw. And then a memory copy here, at here, will destroy the adjacent heap. Um, and I submitted this uh, vulnerability to Apple security this week, and I also met them this morning. Uh, I I'm sure the vulnerability will be fixed soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and to protect against the threat from the graphics drivers, I is some extra work based on the KMON framework. By using the kernel in Hook engine, I hooked up some key functions of graphics driver, such as uh, uh, do attributes interface. Uh, as can be seen, uh, in those handlers, I can filter the opening and the setting operations of untrusted domain. The, the untrusted domain is uh, uh, my uh, graphics further process. Um, so which means I can reject uh, some uh, malicious requests. Uh, uh, by the way, I, I'm very much uh, hope that Apple can add the similar functionality to kernel through the uh, mandatory access control policy and or D-trace interface. Yeah. Um, Yeah, this is almost my presentation. Um, 
we we discussed the uh, bug hunting, uh, zero do, zero day vulnerabilities, and the uh, Kmon open source project. And I also mentioned uh, third party kernel protection and mitigation. Um, I released all the source code. Uh, please check it for for more detailed information. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, guys. Uh,